What's up, Six Barrel Podcast fans? Here we are, back at it again for your listening pleasure. Guys, we are brought to you this episode by Municipal Land Survey. You could reach them at 631-345-2658. Hit them up for all your land surveying needs. We're also brought to you by AS Engineering Services. You get them at 631-560-0259 or at www.aslandservices.com. AS Engineering Services.com. I almost mix the two together. Jesus Christ. You'd think after 49 episodes that I'd have this down pat, but holy crap, sometimes retarded. And last but not least, guys, we're brought to you by Made to Thrive, an American t shirt company. You can reach them at www.madethrive.us or on Instagram at madethrive.us. Guys, this episode we have the one, the only, the cute as a button. I'm a little teapot, Matt Skanga. Guys, if you didn't listen to his last episode, it's hilarious. Uh, you should listen to that one and this one. Um, we talk some wrestling, some combat sports, and of course, uh, one of his favorite pastimes is making fun of his younger brother, our own Mike Skanga, a.k.a. Lunchbox. Give it a listen, guys. It's a lot of fun. Alright guys, we're live. Let's get into it. Six Pro Podcast. D Rock. Yarbs. Skanga. Steve Research team. Blah. Yo, don't speak until spoken to, motherfucker. <laughs> don't ever do that again. You wait for me. I'm just kidding. I like that. That was good. That was good. <laughs> Our guest. Matt Skanga. The little teacup himself. <laughs> Here's my handle. Here's my spouse. <laughs> Still, I still get people at the casino that are like, "How's your brother doing?" And I hope, I hope the legend never dies. Cute as a button. He's cute. <laughs> cute as a button. You are still cute as a yeah. button. Look at that pinky up in the air as he sips. That's Look, fucking sophisticated. A little bit of etiquette, all right. You're fucking adorable. <laughs> <laughs> etiquette is that a word? Goddamn right it is. If not, <laughs> research you know. team, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's just the whole reason why we got him. <laughs> No, I heard a Bricky on the job one time yelling at this guy. He's like, have some fucking etiquette. And me and Errol just looked at each other. We were just like... <laughs> <laughs> so ever since then, I just purposely say... It's like George Bush with his strategery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not a real word? Just trying to make up words and pass them off as being smart. <laughs> oh, man. But it's good to see you, bro. Yeah, man. What's what's going on over here at the 6th Borough? Uh, you know, we just uh, came off our winter break. We're now five or six in since then, right? Yeah. And uh, we're cycling we're in, uh, through some of our old guests. Season two. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you're our our, our, uh, our wrestling expert. So, I mean, n- next to me. I, <laughs> I wrestled too. Mom. Well, yeah. you got the most cauliflower year out of the Skangas. So. Actually, I, you've had your ear drain a few times though, right? Only once. Oh, only once? Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. So I guess we're even. Yeah, but you can actually see yours. Yeah, you can't see mine. Mine's hard as fuck, though. It's just like you, bro. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Best guest ever. Yeah. All right, well, let's wrap this I up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, I mean, Skanga, you drive. This is, uh... Ooh, yeah. This you is weird. I usually, wheel. I usually just drink and make a witty comment every time. Time to yeah. fucking do some work. Coming here. like a wrecking ball. <laughs> no, don't. Nice. He's nice. He's not that drunk. Yeah, not yet. We'll see. But yeah, um, yeah, we, we kind of got you on last minute this week, but I was like, it's always good to have Matt on. Uh, a lot happened in the wrestling world lately. I'm glad I could be a filler for you guys. <laughs> 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 yeah. Don't talk like that. <laughs> Just to interject, etiquette is definitely a word. Nice. Bingo. Uh, what, what are we basing that on? Uh, some guy wrote it on Twitter once. Yeah, that doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> it's been used. It's been used. It's now got what does Webster words. have to say about it? I've got great words. The best words. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> speaking of words and wrestling, let's talk about the kid, uh, what's his name? Dylan Palacio? Palacio. I love this fucking kid. That motherfucker's oh my got some words. I met this kid like he was a junior at Long Beach High School. And we went up to Lake Placid for uh, the Pop and Flow duels. This kid, if you watched him practice at the time, couldn't even shoot like a high crotch, like drop steps and shit. Yo, but on the mat, and this kid like grew up really as a soccer player, 
more than a wrestler. His father was a really good wrestler. His, his whole family was good wrestlers, but this kid was a soccer player. But, yo, just his tenacity on the mat. Yo, this kid wouldn't stop wrestling for six minutes, hitting some of the craziest little techniques and moves. But, like, junior high type stuff that, like, he was hitting on, like, the best kids and the high school kids in the country. Like, like the shit he hit at the NCAAs, that Peterson. Yeah. Like, just, no, just, just, just wing down Peterson. Everyone's hitting it out of What's a Peterson? That it's kind of... Look at that cheesy smile. I was going to say, look at that fucking <laughs> smile on this kid. Yeah, this kid, he's a G, man. He, he gave really, the best interview I've yeah, ever seen, though. this kid is... He uh, has the my favorite it, Instagram yeah, he, post. He's like a love or hate. Like, people either like, yo, fuck Dylan Palacio. He's like, you know, he's a punk or something like that. Or you, or you love him. Bunch that, of fans right here at the Six Bro yeah, Podcast. for sure. Yeah. I heard about him. He gave an interview um, early on in the tournament. And uh, a buddy of mine, um, it's a good Tony... Tagged me in it, and he was like, "Dude, this kid is right up your alley. He sounds like the the shit he's talking about." I was like, "He's like, I imagine you would be saying similar types of shit." And I listened to him. I was like, "Dude, this kid's awesome." I can only imagine what him and his boys get into back in Long Beach. Yeah, this this was the best Instagram. I screenshotted it. I have it on my phone. I love it. It's a picture <laughs> of him taking a selfie after the quarterfinals of the NCAA tournament, and the ESPN reporter goes. Did you really think the NCAA quarterfinals was a good time to Snapchat yourself? And he calls himself the People's Champ, so his response says, The People's Champ, quotes, It's always a good time to ask for nudes. <laughs> <laughs> what's his... Uh, right what's there, his yeah, right there, the one on the right. On the right. That's the <laughs> his Instagram is... What is it, Steve? It's... Uh, <laughs> D Palacio underscore SFTB. I can only imagine what that means. If you... <laughs> Always a good time to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so what? don't like this photo. If it gets two thousand, I have to get kicked in my nuts. <laughs> yeah, and he's at twenty six hundred, so he yeah. definitely kicked in the nuts. <laughs> he's, he's fucking awesome, though. He, he had a great, he made a great run this year too. Nuts, and the girl he left at McDonald's won. <laughs> he gave um. Steve, can you pull up some of his interviews? Uh, sure. Flow wrestling, it. you'll find them. I think it's on. Yeah, YouTube we already also. have Flow uh, pulled up. Yeah. You might need an account, though, to, to watch it on Flow. No, nah, you, you'll get it. On Flow? Yeah, but he, he was he was the most entertaining, um, at least interview-wise. Actually watching his matches, too. He could scramble. How'd he do? He ended up taking sixth, right? Yeah. He took that yeah, semifinal took plunge. The semi-slide. What's that? When you make it to the semifinals and you're guaranteed the place, but then you lose your next three matches and you take six. Ugh. Is that like a curse that people fall into a bunch, or? Uh, no, it just it happens. You know, you, like you, you're hot. You're hot one day. You make it to the semifinals, and then the next day you come back, and you're not so hot. Yeah. Um. So what? What? Uh. What is he? He's a sophomore. Senior? No, he what just graduated. Well, he graduates this year. Okay, he's so he's a, a senior. Yeah. So he didn't really make a whole lot of noise until his senior year. Is he? Like no, he a, placed last year. Also, he took. Oh, he did. He took fourth last year. Okay. But his, I guess, his personality came out more this year, and that's yeah. Cool. And he's always been a good like interviewer, like he, he you know, he, he's not shy. Yeah. Um, this one from January. There's one in particular. Um, Steve, open up a new tab and Google. Uh, I think it was like Dylan Palacio philosophy or something like that. This is the talks about uh, visu- visualization. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> man, that was it. Okay. Was it the hot? So was it this one? I mean, nah, not no, that. No, it was from, it was from the tournament. From the it was from, yeah, yeah, it was from March. Yeah, you'd probably be better at YouTube or like Google or whatever. Um, So you said he had a Peterson? What is that? It's the way he hits it, when a kid like is riding on you and, and he's on the same side of his... Uh, actually, the, he's on the opposite side of his claw. You just kind of wing down on it and then you catch his hip on the other side. And if you hit it right like he did against the Iowa kid, the kid, you know... His arm's wrapped up and he's stuck on his back. He's really got no place to go when you hit it right. So it's like someone's behind you? Yeah, when the kid's on top and you're the bottom man. Oh, I think it's the... the, the go up one. Go up one. Now the dangerous the man is, is cool. But yeah, go to the, the, top one is, top one. the top one is the visualization one. You keep laughing at the way I pronounce that word. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say something deep. The guy giving the interview, Zeb Miller, is really good too. He's funny. All right. 
<laughs> to the shack. Yo, so. Alright, so. Here's a roll for the fall. Here's a roll for the fall. I mean. There we go. I'll tell you what, visualization is a serious thing. It's a real thing. And I remember back in TC3, because yes, I went to TC3, let it be known. What's that? I went to a community college. Community college, and right. And then I went to the Ivy League. I want everyone to make sure they remember that. I don't forget my roots. Shout out to soccer there. All my best friends, Mickey Brown. I remember these people in the past that I crossed with. And one thing it was, it was always visualization. I remember older guys would laugh at me because I would play my come out song. I would play it. And they would say, what are you doing? And I would be like, I'm just practicing my moment. And they would laugh. But when that moment came, my freshman debut, and that song was playing, I reminded myself how much I knew this was going to happen. The future. You have to believe in it and believe in yourself. You know? So when I'm out there, I visualize this moment. What would it feel like? And it was all so real. You know, visualization. I let go of the balloon. Let go of everything that's holding you down in this life. And that's all I did here today. I visualized it. When I spent my spring break in a hospital two years in a row, I canceled my trips. I had trips to go down south and join my time off. I was like, no. I spent two years in a hospital and there was no cameras. The only people who were with me were L40. They nurtured me back here right now. So when I'm going out there and they're sending me texts like, bro, it don't even matter what you do. We love you independent of results. How could you not feel freedom to do whatever you want out there? To have no walls, no boundaries to act simply as the art it is. Because this is an art, and we pervert from that. As we get older, it's about money, whatever it is, fame, I don't care. But when you get back to the kid, the root of it all, why you started in the first place, it was all for the love. Like a little kid, a flow state. A flow state. Yeah. Maybe not <laughs> it's like he's dancing. Flow state nonetheless, we don't care about the results. And the people who it's like he's on mushrooms, you, right? <laughs> you don't care about the results. He definitely has a mind-altering fucking experience, experience going on right now. It's the freedom. You should be a motivational speaker after this. I, man, Steve, kill this for a second. This is a pretty long interview. It's like, there's still... Yeah, it's still a couple minutes left. Yeah. But I, I listened to the whole thing, and I was like, yo, this kid's fucking awesome. And I didn't even know... I didn't see him wrestle or nothing, I, and I was like, this kid's fucking cool. I dig I dig what he's saying, and I watched a punch of his highlights. I was like, yo, this kid's legit. I was like, I'm a fan. Yeah, he, he's, he's he fucking He actually too. almost made the Olympic team for Uruguay last summer. Really? What? Why? Why? I guess through his mother, he has dual citizenship. I believe it's through his mother's side. Uh, dual citizenship to Uruguay. That's, that's like Esco wrestling for Honduras. Yeah, Esco wrestled for Honduras. Yeah. But yeah, like so, he he was representing Uruguay, and they were he was at an overseas tournament, the last chance qualifier, and you had to take like top two at the last chance qualifier to get into the Olympics, and he like just missed it, like just came up short. <laughs> He's awesome. I like him. Yeah, he was just wrestling like balls to the wall at this tournament, like you know, like, like he, you know, he always hits like leg passes and shit like that. Yeah. So he's in like wrestling freestyle, trying to like hit leg passes, but not roll across his own back. Yeah, he's like literally trying to figure it out in the middle of this Olympic qualifying tournament. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sick to watch. There you go. You gotta admire that somebody just like fuck it, throws caution in the wind like that. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like when you seen him in high school, like technique like wasn't there. Like he just said it. He he would hit a Russian. He would and foot sweep you because he was mad good at soccer. So he'd pull a Russian, and then if he could, he'd foot sweep you and put you on your ass. Now, what the hell is a Russian? You just like a Russian is a, a, nah, it's, a <laughs> it's a it's a two on one tie up. You got your two hands on one of his arms. And yeah, you're, I'll you're, demonstrate on D Rock. Oh yeah, do that because I feel like wrestling. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you're, you're right here. Okay. Oh. Oh, just showing that. Okay, yeah. we can do that. Uh, I uh, yeah, I thought you were making good up with foot people. No, 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 no. I wasn't gonna pull Maka. Go on. <laughs> so what about what about your boy Piccinini? He's yeah, a prodigy. Had, had a hell of a tournament. Man. Came out, took fourth. He uh, he lost to the Gilman kid in the quarterfinals. The Gilman was the number one seed from. Talked a bunch of shit that kid too. And the third and fourth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought Nicky was gonna get his revenge at the third and fourth place match, especially because Gilman lost in the semis. So he was like, you know, a little down on himself. And uh, but he 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 beat up Nicky a little bit. But yeah. it was all right. You know, that dude's a graduating senior. Nicky's a redshirt freshman. You know. They'll be wrestling again in, in freestyle in the near future, and Nikki's going to be catching up to him for sure. So, yeah. you know what? I really liked Gilman before the tournament. 
Because I, I, I love, I've always liked. I've, him, I love I the way he do. is. He's like, I'm the fucking best. Get out of my way. He's that kind of guy. But like when Nikki tried to wrestle him, almost his style, like put his hands in his face, yeah, clubbing bitch. him hard. I was he's watching that. Yeah, he was bitching about it. Like, dude, you do the fucking same thing. Yeah, like, you can't, like, you can't yeah. bitch about somebody doing the same shit you do. And I seen, but Nikki was out there swinging. You know, he's just, <clears throat> you know, Nikki was overmatched, so you know he was trying to make up for it. And uh, but, you know, this is what it is. Fucking wrestling. Gilbert's gonna complain about it, like you said. Yeah. But kid does it all the time. You know, that's his game. But yeah, I, I love his tenacity, though. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm still a Gilman fan, even though he did beat up my boy. You think but, Nikki um, beats that ass though in the parking lot, like they said? You think Nikki gets? The best <laughs> yeah, Nikki, oh, yeah. Like, he can box, bro. He can box. Like he did, he did some box and boxing when he was growing up as a little little tyke. Yeah, he's yeah. I I could definitely see him following Gregor's steps. You know, getting into you know if, if freestyle and you know his Olympic aspirations don't work out, definitely get into the. Uh, Mixed martial arts thing. Gregor's real high on him too, you know. And um, if he if he has that whatever that thing is, the way Gregor does, he'll be real successful with MMA too. <laughs> oh yeah, no, Nicky's a Nicky's a he's an animal. Part of the thing that like always separated him from the rest is that switch that he would hit when he would get on the mat. Like it was like go time. Would fuck kill you, motherfucker. Like even if you were like. But he was nice, you know, the little pip squeaks that he used to wrestle down at 106 and 113. Like, Nikki had a, Nikki had a, uh, like a beard in 8th grade. That's on 106. <laughs> yeah, like a man amongst you children. Know, yeah. Exactly. Even though he was only in 8th grade, he was like a man amongst children. I know you that know. feeling. I started shaving when I was like 12. Jesus. I just started shaving yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day, Matt. <laughs> you, can't, you can't grow one? No, nah, man. This is, really? This is all you got? That's it. This is a week. Shave like I buzz it once a week. So does I, I, I'm curious to know what the mechanism is behind that. Like why, what regulates beard growth? Because some good. Good. Yeah. good beard. You know? It's so. a great beard, bro. <laughs> no, your hair is great. Your beard's okay. I remember when you decided to start growing that beard. Well, I went goatee hard for a while, for a long time. He was like, I'm just not going to shave for a yeah. long time. And I give you credit. That's what you got to do. You got to commit. Yeah, that was the best move I ever made. It took like what two years to get to that length? No, come on, bro. <laughs> I just trimmed this a couple of days ago. Well, this is seven years ago when you started this. Well, yeah, bro. I was a young man. I wasn't fully matured. It's the one thing a young Mike Skanker can't do. It's grow a beard. <laughs> Can do everything else. Can do pretty much everything else. Can your other brother grow a beard? Yeah. Yeah, Dom's got a nice yeah, beard. Yeah, Dom grows a beard. Yeah. He wears a beard right now. Yeah, I wonder what term wear a beard. Can you can you <laughs> Google this? Can you Google what it is like? Why some <laughs> men just can't grow beards? It's a pussy. Uh, <laughs> why did I know that phrase was gonna come out at some point? I was wondering who was gonna throw that phrase out. All right, I'm so, I was actually this was a genuine, curious scientific inquiry. I was trying to make fun. Nope. Yeah, I got you. I, I'm curious about that. You I don't need vermin. I don't understand, like, what controls that. I guess testosterone has something to do with it, but... I mean, well, yeah. I mean, my shit works. I'm yeah. trying... I mean, yeah, you got two kids, I mean... I'm just... I, I, I want to know, like... I'm trying to, like, drill down to the exact mechanism of why. Why not? Every oh, look, there you are. You think you read pictures. So, we got, uh... All right, you read it, and then you give us the info. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... So Piccinini, red shirt, freshman. Yeah. I mean, what he takes sixth, fourth, fourth. Damn, that's real good, right? That's I mean, impressive. like that's um, yeah, that's as good as you get. Um, well, obviously not as yeah. good as you get, but, well, yeah. but, yeah. but yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. he was the eighth seed coming in. Like I said, and he met up with the one seed in the quarterfinals, lost to him. Uh, won a couple of uh, wrestlebacks. Got his all American. Was actually supposed to wrestle a kid from Virginia, another redshirt freshman who was highly touted, but that kid got injured. So Nikki got the medical forfeit, moved on to the third place match. That would have been a good match against the Virginia kid, the kid Mueller. Oh yeah. But he he lost in the semis or whatever it was, and injury defaulted to sixth. So I, I don't know. I guess he hurt his knee or something. I never found out what the deal was. What's the qualifications to be all American in, in NCAA? Top eight. Top eight. Okay. And so most weight classes are 33 man brackets. Okay. And he had a, a beast of a kid. This kid, Nick Seriano, who's uh, just a straight up freshman. Yeah. From uh, Penn State. 
and uh, he actually got injured in the dual meet a couple weeks before the tournament wrestling Nikki and couldn't wrestle in the NCAAs because of the injury. Yeah, he had the three seed, ended up not even taking the mat, I guess. Like it was so, it was the weirdest thing. Like he's wrestling Nikki, you don't even you don't even see him turn his ankle in the match. Yeah. And all of a sudden they go out of bounds and he stands up and he's like just holding one foot in the air like a dog. Like you know how like a dog like holds his paw up and like but may, might not be whimpering. He's just standing there with his foot in the air and he looks over at Cal Sanders and he's like um I don't know what happened, but I can't <laughs> <wrestle. fucked> up. <laughs> <laughs> and something. even like even like after after the match, like Cal Sanderson's like he's like, Yeah, he's never really been injured before, so he doesn't really know. Like he thinks it's broken, but you know, it's probably just a sprain, we'll get back, we'll get we'll get it checked out. And like like Sanderson was sandbagging the whole time. Like even literally the night before the NCAA's Sandbagging son of a bitch. Sandbagging Sanderson. Bitch. <laughs> literally the night before the NCAA, he's like, Yo, he's wrestling right now. He's down in the practice room, like rolling around right now, like he's ready to go. And then, boom, morning of the NCAA, he defaults. Which kind of sucks because it does, it did stop one more guy from wrestling in the NCAAs. Not that that 34th guy would have <laughs> yeah. made a big difference in the bracket, but you never know. Wait, yeah. so what, what did he do? He broke it? I guess so, yeah. Whatever it, whatever it was, it was bad enough to keep him out of the NCAA tournament. Uh, I'm just going to say, when you injured Nikki his yeah. senior year, <laughs> and it. Won a state title yeah. on a broken ankle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nikki Piccinini, Matt uh, was wrestling him at practice, and he got a high ankle sprain or something like that. And, it was like uh, two days before the league tournament, yeah. and the leagues qualify you for the counties, and the qu- counties qualify you for the states. So two days before the league tournament, last go of practice. It was like this would have been pretty much the last go, and we would have wrestled each other at state practice. But one of the last goes like of his high school career that I had with him. He goes to inside trip me and I headlock him at the same time and he just hits the mat and he screams on him like fuck what happened? And he's he's like I don't know they said it was sprained but I think it was broken. It was bad cuz he couldn't even wrestle in the leagues. He like he limped his way to one win in the leagues like just like ripped the kid's head off and choked him and pinned him. And then defaulted out of the tournament. Yeah. So he had to lose his consecutive losing. Yeah, yeah, uh, he had the Long Island record of consecutive wins. He had the consecutive win streak, but then he had to default out of tournament so yeah. that he didn't aggravate his ankle. So Matt, Matt ended his win streak. <laughs> Way to go, Matt! I know, right? Just, cr- just like playing. The <laughs> he game. still won the states on one leg, and they still let you train little kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the last go. It is. Oh, you know, it is. It really is. Well, you can't go anymore after that. Uh, you know what? You're absolutely right. It's, it's like it's a, when you lose something. It's smart. I got when you smart. lose something, it's always in the last place you look. <laughs> yep. Because after you find it, you stop looking. <laughs> no. Is, is this where we're going, going right now? <laughs> it's a lot of skank yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and cheesy yeah, humor going on this day. Why, right why do you drive on a park when you park in a driveway? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. Why do they call buildings buildings? They're already done. They should be old right. buildings. I'm, I'm un- ah, I never heard that one before. <laughs> I'm unfollowing I'm this conversation. <laughs> what a brosive. <laughs> Whatever, guy. You find out about your beard yet? I did. It turns out that you may not be responsive to your own testosterone. Maybe you I've been I've been dying to ask the doctor about that kind of thing, but how do you bring it up? Be like, hey doc, can I get some of that good stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's basically it. Like, yo, I'm just trying to grow a beard. That's all. Just heavy doses. I just, <laughs> <laughs> just want to get taken seriously by some people. I still get a. Pro- I've gotten approached pretty recently by either janitors or security guards at Ward Bevel High School, thinking I was a student. Really. Absolutely. That's fantastic. They're like, hey, son, you got to catch the bus? (laughs) I'm like, Yeah, I'm about 20 years late. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. (laughs) Uh, That's a double-edged sword. Like, it's good and bad, you know? It's good to still look young. Be good when I'm 50. Yeah, you look 30. That's right. Might not be be that good at that age because you're going to have kids... Who are like teenagers and they're gonna try and smack you around and shit. They're gonna have no uh, respect. For yeah, them. I'd like to see that. How about that? I'd they, love to see that. Huh? You'd fucking kill them. Well, yeah. I don't know. We'll see what kind of wrestlers they turn into. Uh, I'm sure they're gonna be animals. Tommy was at soccer practice tonight. Oh, yeah? How was that? I So I'm like the assistant coach, and this other guy, Paul, obviously has like no coaching experience at all. But he played soccer. Mm, maybe. Maybe. It's debatable. <laughs> it's debatable. It's all... So I kind of like hijacked the practice. Like I told him, I was like, I was like, dude, I don't know that much about soccer, but 
I coach. I've been coaching kids for over ten years. So, you know, if you need me to do anything, I'll, you know, let me know. You know how to get on their level. Let. Uh, uh, <laughs> I joke. So I last joke. week I let this guy do the practice and he like just dropped the ball. So like tonight I had to hijack the practice. Yeah, I saw at the game. <laughs> you guys got worked. Yeah, that other team. That other team was a bunch of that ringers, bro. A bunch of ringers. Bunch of, bunch of five, what are they, six, five and six year olds playing four year olds? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, so like, I, we did a little. No, it, it happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. last, last drill of the night, we do a little breakaway drill, and I'm like, you know, I set the kids up at the PK part, and I put Coach Paul in net, and I just had the kids like dribble up and try to dribble straight and get it in the net. That was ginormous. Tommy goes. <laughs> throws the shirt over the face dribbles it in and kicks it <laughs> and I'm just like He's, what is this yep. the N1 mixtape yeah. of uh, like four year old definitely your, definitely your son I'm like, I'm like yeah. where did he even pick that up <laughs> it's, it, like, it's in his watch, jeans he's been watching it's sports center while I have or something like that <laughs> Pretty soon he's gonna be rolling up the shorts, tan his thighs on the on the soccer field. Yeah, he had the dopest outfit on. He had these red pants with this black and red Spider-Man shirt on, and he's got like safety green soccer cleats. Yeah, he's got Very the same fucking f- wrestling shoes. Just like, yeah, they look just yeah. like his wrestling shoes. Oh yeah, Tommy was looking fresh. Nice. So, um, besides your actual kids. <laughs> What kids do you have coming through the wrestling program that are like, you should keep an eye out for? You guys got any potential? Um, I got a kid coming back who took third at the counties this year at 132. This kid, Leavano. He, um, he's actually down in Jersey right now at the war at the shore. He's making the rounds. He went to Virginia Beach. Had a bad show at Virginia Beach at the Nationals. But uh, doing everything he needs to do. Hopefully he's lifting hard. Hold his nah, I don't know about him lifting hard. He'll, he'll do a, the wrestling hard. He'll be a senior. He'll put next in the year. work, wrestling wise. But I, I don't see him lifting hard. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. What uh, do you um? What's your take on me and me and your brother been discussing this a little bit? Um, do you think that MMA is helping or hurting, uh, like high school wrestling and collegiate wrestling? Helping. I agree. Helping. I agree. I had this conversation with my father. A while ago, like when UFC first started blowing up, and he's like, "It's got to be helping with the numbers and like participation-wise and stuff like that," because you know these little kids sit there and watch it with their old men, you know. And, oh, Dad, I want to do that. So, all right, let's go sign up for wrestling. Yeah. You know, and you know, it, and a little bit, you still get a little bit, and actually, probably you get a little bit more of the pipsqueak dads that are trying to live vicariously through their sons and make their sons tough guys so let's sign them up for wrestling and they're more into it than the kids are and you still do you do get that not and it's it's not the worst thing in the world because you're still coming out for wrestling you know you're still putting the kid in the program you know and then hopefully the father can get his head on straight you know and not ruin it for the kid but uh, like I said you know that even if that's the, the kind of old man you're going to be you're still getting your kid out on the wrestling mat right so better than nothing Exactly. What um? How many kids do you have that are like juggling both worlds? Like you got a lot of kids that are that wrestle and then cross train, like they're doing MMA type stuff, they're doing jujitsu stuff. Like you I, a lot of those I kids? see it a lot more um, like when they're younger, like in the kid wrestling. I have a lot more kids that have either started or dabbled with the judo, karate, jujitsu type things, and then. And, and you can always spot the jiu-jitsu kids when they come out to wrestling because they're all they pulling pinned. hard. <laughs> you know, they're all, they all got their legs yeah, in the air. Yeah. And, uh... Well, that was my next question because, obviously, I'm on the other side, right, where I see, like, how wrestling helps jiu-jitsu. Is there any benefits that if a kid came in, a young kid came in, he's been doing jiu-jitsu for a while, and then just started wrestling, is there any crossover benefit like the way wrestling crosses over oh yeah like they definitely you could definitely see they have the balance um like certain you know like the sweet positions you know like they can find themselves in a bad position and then sweep the kid because the kid on top doesn't really know his balance yet and stuff like that you know and plus they you know it's ill-advised if you wrestle on a guy who knew it and knew what you were doing you know that like judo karate throw where you step across and try to back kick your leg yeah. mm-hmm. 
if you hit that against anybody who knew how to wrestle, you'd get taken down. But when you're a little kid and you go throwing that leg across and throwing a horrible looking headlock, like that shit actually works at good wrestling. So, unfortunately, those kids do see success, like your boy Tristan. Always throwing. Oh, he's a headlock headlocks. king. Yeah. Can't get out on bottom, but he, but was he a, could headlock But anybody. he was a jiu-jitsu kid, so like, that's where I came from. And I try, I've been trying to get him away from it. But I was always curious about that because the, the wrestlers that come over to jiu-jitsu, you can tell like right away. And there's, uh, the benefits are obvious, so I just was always curious about how it worked. And a lot of crossover in the skill sets. You know, similar ears... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. He's got jujitsu ears. I got wrestling ears. His, his are nicer than mine. Let's see. You got like you got like the perfect amount. I wish I had a little more, cause like you you don't look at it and notice it, but it's hard to the touch. That makes people very little feel. bit. He's like no, no, look, really, I, 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 I have a very little bit like on the inside here. I was thinking about starting to wrestle lefty so that I could start getting it more on my left ear. Cause see, he wrestles lefty. Like your lead, your lead side is what gets the cauliflower ear. Which righty look like? I'm saying. So see, but I wrestled, I wrestle righty, and my right ear is the one I had drained, and it's normal shape now for the most part. Like you can't even tell, but it's hard, you know, hard as a rock. So I'm not gonna get it again here. This is this is. Done. It's not true. I'm, it's not true. No, you can crack that. You can you depending on how. I'd have to get whacked. I mean, I've been hitting the ear and nothing. The one time I got my ear drained, it was after college. It was like right after college. I came back from Cortland, and I was wrestling with Mike Torero one night, just like randomly. He, you know, he, we were at Rocky Point. He showed up. I was there, so we start going live, and I just boom, he popped me once. And I was like, oh, I felt that. <laughs> and by the time I got home, by the time I got home, my ear like had flapped out like a car door opening. And I came home. I was like, yo, ma. Call that, call that doctor guy. You know that can drain my ear. <laughs> I think I need to get it done. I uh, I gave a kid cauliflower ear on Monday. Nice. <laughs> I've been sparring with this kid Justin, helping him get ready for his fight. Uh, he's fighting a lefty, so I've been working with him. And uh, did you last, help, did you help Gregor fight for fighting the lefty? Uh, Keith had asked me to, um, but our schedules didn't really work as well. Because like, I've heard numerous interviews where he shouted out his specific lefty training and that sparring partners come in, so... Wasn't me. Your claim to fame. Wasn't me this time. But, um... I'm going to give you credit anyway, though. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it was hard. He felt like he was, he was training against you, yeah. so... You, I'm sure you were there for one way, shape, shape or form, for Gregor and his tremendous 20-second win. Whether you, nothing, fill, whether you filled his mind with some nice philosophical thoughts. Me, me and Gregor always wax, wax poetic when I'm there, yeah. Um, but no, I had nothing to do with it this time around. Um, or ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've trained with him before, but I wasn't... Um, Keith had actually asked me to, um, but the, the, the scheduling never really worked out too much. No, thanks, Keith. Too good for him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what's, anyway. he got, what's he got to offer me? Yeah. <laughs> What are you, four-time whole American Division One champ? Uh, Please. I've won Nagas, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I've been training with this kid. Anyway, we were sparring on Monday, last round, and uh, he was like, his headgear, he had to stop his headgear. I'm like, dude, just take the fucking headgear off. And uh, Oh, man, that's when you gave him college Not right? wrestling headgear, though. You know, striking headgear. I'm like, dude, you're not oh, fighting. Okay. I'm like, you're not fighting with it, so just take the shit off. It gets in the way. I'm like, I'm not a big fan of it. And he looks at Keith, and Keith's like, do whatever you want. Take it off if you want. She takes it off. And uh, last round, <laughs> we're, uh, I have him, like, down on the cage, and I'm kind of, like, uh, on, like, the, you know, referee's, like, hip ride position. And he's looking to get up, and I just fucking crack him. And... I guess it landed flush on his ear, and it was a good shot. Like, you know well, when you like the sixteens, really? Yeah. And his ear but, popped up. Well, when we, we were sparring, you know, You're so strong. We were sparring live, <laughs> and I had like I had the I had the superior position, so I was able to throw a good shot, whack them pretty good, and then uh, you know the round ended. And I'm looking, I'm like, I'm like, dude, your ear's fucked up. And he's like, y what? And I'm like, oh, is that new? He's like. Yeah, and he goes and looks. He's like, "That's from you, man." He's like, "You hit me right in the ear on that last round." I'm like, "Shit, of course." Here you go, coach. When I tell you to fucking take your headgear off, that's when it happens. But he was like, he was pumped about. It. Actually, he's he knows you guys. Eventually, 
Who knows you guys? His name. He's a he's a wrestling coach for Comac, Justin Yodice. He said he's, he knows your guy's name. He knows the Skanga name. I've probably seen him. Just don't know his name. Good kid. Good kid. How, how, how old is he? Is, you say he's, kid. Uh, is he young or? He's got to be no more than twenty-two. Young kid. Oh, um, here I'll show you. Maybe recognize his face. Super nice guy. Good wrestler. He's gonna be good. Yo dice. I, I might, could be pronouncing it wrong, but yeah, probably. You probably no, you yeah. It's probably you like Chad Smith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me find him here. We, we actually talked uh, wrestling a little bit uh, with our last guest, uh, Vinny Uzi. Right? I'm saying that right. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how to yeah, say no, his full his, last his name. Last name is much longer. But, than uh, we call him Vinny Uzi. Yeah. Uh, I was telling them how good Long Island wrestling is right now. Uh, yeah, something like. Yeah, like, how many? I I think Long Island, just Long Island, not even New York State, could compete with pretty much any state right now, except Pennsylvania maybe. Yeah. And Vito is uh, well, Intermat named Vito the Wrestler of the Year. Yeah, I'm sure at A6 will Vito, do the same. Vito Ar- Ar- Arja was his last name. Aruja. Aruja, he's from. Uh, Nassau, um, yeah, Syosset. Syosset, yeah. But and it, he's a, what, junior world champ? No, he took third, or runner-up at the Cadet Worlds. Cadet Worlds. But um, his father wrestled for the USSR back in the 90s. Two-time world champ and took second at the Olympics. So, the dude's the real deal. It's uh, it's funny how areas can you know start to become like uh, known for certain sports or certain things because you know like Long Island's becoming very known for wrestling as you guys are talking about um, lacrosse. Lacrosse is like one of the biggest things. I I've known kids that weren't even starters on their own teams and right. got scholarships to play lacrosse because of how well known like lacrosse is on Long Island. Yeah, I, like I don't, I just, it's it's so bizarre to me, like that. Areas just, you know, I, I just say like, you know, Canada known for hockey because that's all it is. It's fucking freezing up there, like that's what they do. Well, yeah, that's that's a little bit how it is down with, with the Pennsylvania and the wrestling. Like, you know, you you don't you don't have to be a state champ if you're from Pennsylvania, you know, to uh, to be highly recruited. You know, and it there there's this, to bring up this one specific example of this kid, this kid. Sam Crivius from PA a few years back, he didn't win a PA state title at all, but he won three Super 32 titles, which is like a national title. Wow. It's like a preseason national. It's one of the bigger... So he wasn't even the best in his own state. Yeah, he couldn't win his state tournament, but he had three straight, and he's one of the the only kids to win three straight Super 32s. Wow. Yeah. So it's pretty, pretty funny how it goes. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy, but uh, Long Island right now is awesome. With her. like, I, I I do mostly the kid wrestling with the program that uh, we do, and uh, Matt's like that, you know, lead technician, and I, you know, I do the little kids, just the basics, really. You know, I go to the kid tournaments with them, and just there's so many high level coaches doing kid wrestling, and you know, the kids through middle school, junior high. There's just a, a wealth of coaches on the island right now. It's awesome. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with the, the wrestling club scene. Yep. Like, when we were in high school, our club, the North Shore Club, North Shore Wrestling Club, Darren Goldstein, ran it out of Rocky Point, Shoreham, all that, you know, Jesse Jansen, Mike Turriero, uh the Patchoviches, you know. Us. I, yeah, we were in there. <laughs> catch, catch them, you know. We had the best wrestling club. We had one of the only like wrestling clubs where it wasn't school specific. It wasn't you know like Lugiani always closed off his Huntington room, room. You know because he always coached you know closed off the Longwood room. Darren welcomed anybody you wanted to come down, come on down. And that whole iron sharpens iron uh, mantra. Say, when you when you welcome anybody, you you can get the best people in there. You, you exactly. Know, like, so Darren was one of the first guys on Long Island to do that whole thing. And uh, or at least in Suffolk County, so. But you know now, going back ten years ago from now, you know Pachovich and Deep Squall, you know they started the Razor Club. Darren and I had the North Shore Club going with the kids, so we go. You know, we joined up. The Razor Club was huge, and then slowly but surely, everybody else on Long Island 
started bringing their own wrestling clubs in. Vitigliano with the Ascend Club in Nassau. Vito, you know, his, cl his club, uh, uh, Vogar, Vito's father, Vogar, his club started blowing up. Patrovich broke off. He's got his own club. Guys got clubs uh, all over the island. Wideman has a fucking club. Yeah, Wideman, 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 Wideman and Wideman. Franco do their own thing. Yeah. You know, so, something I, I was just thinking, as, as you are saying this, like the youth um, wrestling and how it's becoming bigger and stuff, I wonder if part of it is becoming the um, youth sports have, have gotten to the point where it's like, we don't keep score. We don't, you can't do that in wrestling. Someone's going to win. Someone's going to lose. Like, they, like there's no... There's no if ands or buts about it. Like you, like they, there are winner, clear winners and clear losers. So it pushes kids to work harder to be better. I hate I hate sports. Like listen, you know when they're three years old, it's one thing. But like once they get to the point where the kids are trying to keep score, parents are like no, the rest are like no, and there's no score. No, no, there is a fucking score. You're playing a sport. Yeah, you, you see, don't like, want to lose. Work harder. You'll see the refs like at, at like the five and six year olds, like at the little in house tournaments. The refs will raise both kids' hands at the end of the match. But anybody who's watching the match, obviously, right. there was a winner or loser. Right, exactly. Yeah, there was a uh, shit. I forget which tournament it was this year, but they announced it like when they were doing the bantams, which is like the four and five year olds. They announced it like, oh, we're not going to count pins. We're going to let them wrestle the whole three minute match, whatever. And it was a disaster because this kid's on his back within ten seconds, it's and now he's just getting three, held on his. Three now he's getting on his yeah. Back. He spends three minutes on his back. See, that's so and that does work. nothing for the kid. Yeah. No, that, that's so that doesn't work. It's like that, yeah. that's going to make you feel like shit. Like at least you, if you lose in ten seconds, you're like fuck. And like I some of these kids hard. are like just laying there on their backs, like have no idea. Like everyone's looking at them, like getting pinned. They have no idea what's going on. With some of these kids, it's. Pretty unfortunate. <laughs> but that kid probably stopped wrestling after that. Cause exactly. I know if I got dominated for three minutes and someone's just fucking holding you down, like it, yeah, I don't it want definitely, to do that you know, it, it trims the fat a little bit, you know, and especially at that young age, you know, like like I, I did a lot of losing when I was a kid wrestler, but um, part of me wanted to persevere or whatever it was. I don't know. I got I would get close. I never won like any tournaments, like third, fourth, fifth grade, sixth grade. I think I won my first tournament in, like seventh grade. But um, so like, I got always, and I and I took some beatings by the same kids every week. Same kids, uh, yeah. Same kids every week. You go back and you lose too, and you try to get closer and closer and closer. I guess I was just you know perseverance or whatever it was. I just I just loved the sport, so I just kept coming back for more. But uh, and then eventually had my day. But, Your day uh, and never looked but, back. You know, I guess <laughs> you know. So I guess some kids aren't built like that, and you know they take a beating and, or two, you know, or. Something turns them off from the sport, and they, you know, you never see them again on a wrestling mat. They, you know, maybe go into the arts or something. But that's you need that. You need that because otherwise, you know what, dude? If maybe you sound like a real uh, trumpster right there. No, no, you don't. You sound like somebody who's got their head in reality. Because listen, if you if you snowflake, take, if you take these kids. And tell them that they're good at stuff that they're not good at. Maybe they're wasting their time there. Right. You're never gonna. You might never be good at basketball. You might never be good at be, uh, football or wrestling. But maybe you're a good artist. Maybe you're a good singer. You might never discover that if you don't wash out of the things you're not good at. And here's the thing: like you know, people say like, "Oh, well, it may discourage them, and they may really enjoy it." Okay, that's fine. You know what? There, there are going to be kids that are not good at sports, and there have always been kids that are not good at sports, and they're going to keep playing. No matter what, because they love the sport. Yeah, that's what but recreational that, shit's right. For. But that doesn't mean that they should be on the varsity team, no. or they should be playing in college, or they should do, be doing any of that shit. Like that means that's for the people who excel and yeah. shine. If they if they really like it, that means be a good parent and buy a hoop on your fucking driveway and <laughs> let them shoot there. And maybe you got to be a parent and spend time with your fucking kid. You can't just send them to basketball and he sucks at. It. So I guess I'm out of I got deep seated issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, was that about you? Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know. It's, it's okay, buddy. Sorry. You're in a we're we're going to take a five minute pause and just hug you out for a couple minutes. I want your goddamn hugs. <laughs> You're not my dad. <laughs> he didn't hug you either. I, exactly. <laughs> Nothing's going to make up for it. That was the joke I was going to. I'm going to shoot some hoops, buddy. <laughs>
<laughs> You're a cripple. Get out yeah, of here. Who got ties on for Chase? It's for yeah. D-Rock. <laughs> it's true. He just throws one over the backboard and it's true. <laughs> me and Skanger, Sk- me and Skanger built it that day, and it was really just so I could use it. <laughs> Rain. And then, and then we played horse. What happened when we played horse? That's because I'm not allowed to fucking dunk it. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's know. pretty fair. That's a fair no, rule. But it's not fair. What are you though? Even talking about? I don't remember. Oh, what well, I dominated. I don't remember. If that. you dunk it, he just has to shoot it from where you jump from. No. Yeah. No. You have to do. You have to do the same shot. Well, you then have to we, shoot. we can lower you the rim. Shoot from the same spot. For those watching. For those watching. Well, we we can I'm put watching, it. Listening. Well, Jesus let's Christ. see. You got about a foot on me, so we lower it to nine feet, and Go maybe ahead. I get dunked on nine feet. I don't feet. think you're dunking on even nine feet. Have you seen? Have you seen his one calf muscle? As long as I jump off my right leg, I'll, I'll make it. Why your left leg is not the same? Oh, oh I'm, I'm all right calf. From oh, you from see that thing? That is. I mean, it, it's good, but not the right nearly as good. But the right one's. All what bad. is that about? From when he broke his leg when he was like eight. Yeah, my my left leg um, never even back out. Um. Yeah, never even back. Out. I broke my leg um a month after I turned eleven. November 17th, had surgery November 19th. Wow. <laughs> How do you remember these dates? I had major knee surgery, bro. It fucking stands out. And uh, I broke my kneecap in half on my left leg. I got a fucking eight inch scar on my knee. Looks the only thing that's eight inches. Looks more like five. <laughs> anyway. If you think that's eight, I wonder what oh, yeah. you tell people. So, about. yeah. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I broke my kneecap and I have tore ligaments and stuff. And then uh, I had one surgery to put pins and wires to hold my kneecap together. And I was in a cast for a couple months. They used and wires? I got, yeah, they put, uh, they put like two Copper pins. Copper wire? Two pins going they down. Burn it? Yeah. <laughs> two pins going down. That's an insulated joke, by the way. Uh, <laughs> two pins going down and then they kind of like figured a wire around it to hold my kneecap together. And, uh, I bet you then, Kevin Zoyka could have done that for you. Yeah, it's another insulated joke. We, we don't have a lot of hey guys, insulators let's, that listen. Let's, let's, let's do nothing but inside jokes yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's tell more stories about, you know, that I wasn't there for. But yeah, then I, then I got the cast off. Yeah, yeah, I'd have another guy. surgery, and I went to physical therapy. But yeah, that leg never caught back up. We have a lot in common, Mike Skanga. Yeah. Well, I mean, mine works now. <laughs> <laughs> I have two things on my body that are long, longer and rarer than yours. Let's put it that way. Oh. All right, whip them out. <laughs> <laughs> it's old fashioned. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got a cock off. This, this Third leg <laughs> works. That's all I'm saying. But I can't. Dunk. This took a turn for the worse. Yeah. yeah. Um, Try well, to talk about Duncan. <laughs> Yeah, because dunking fucking gets into fucking measuring dicks. Not Everybody gets yeah. into measuring dicks when it's a skanga. That's what it means in Italian, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Dave who measures dicks. <laughs> what did your parents do back in the old country? <laughs> Dick well, measures. <laughs> <laughs> they invented the ruler. <laughs> Alright, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, so... Have you talked to anybody on the inner circle about uh, our boy Weidman the other night? Um, in regards to like what actually went down. Yeah, um, we're like, you know what? I don't have any inside scoop. Um, I also didn't. Uh, I didn't get to see the fight, so I only got to see. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I was working, but I saw the replay of like the final. Um, uh, you know, series of events or whatever, and. Uh, you know, it looked to me from, you know, obviously I'm not Dan Murray glad I was in that position, but it looked from what, I, you know, the video that I saw, I was like, how, why were they even debating whether or not the knees were legal? Um, but th- that's a whole other mess of it uh, in of itself. I really think the it doesn't matter whether or not the knees were legal or illegal at the end of the day. What matters is, was he able to continue? And uh, I, I just kind of feel like he... He was in a precarious spot. Like, I mean, Ray Longo did an interview saying something that I kind of thought made some sense. He's like, you, you changed, you start changing the guy's mind 
when the referee intervened like intervenes like that. You start telling him he's got five minutes, you kind of get into that mindset, like, okay, I have time or whatever. So I don't, you know, a lot of people are kind of accusing him of, like, trying to gain the system and milk things, but it's like, you know what? I, I can see the argument for, like, hey, you thought you got hit with an illegal knee now and you have the five minutes. Yeah, you're going to take advantage of that. You know, so I, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I mean, he's he's definitely catching a lot of heat because people are kind of calling him out like, oh, when you thought it was illegal, you didn't want to fight. But the second they were legal, you're ready to go. And, like, he caught a bunch of heat for that. The thing with me is, all right, the fucking ref stopped the fight. So it's not like Weidman tapped. You yeah. Know? So if, if you went back to this replay, determined they were legal knees because, I guess, one hand down is legal, two hands down is illegal. Is I think what I don't the, even know the, what it, uh, dude. That rule is so they, murky. It was so new, fuzzy. Like, nobody even yeah, knows. The, the new rule is is very strange. Like, and they just changed the rounds down. But it's, or, it's, but it's yeah. to stop guys and now from game. Now it's to stop guys from doing. Okay, my hands are down, so you can't hit me. Yeah, which is a, a dick move. Weidman, being the good wrestler that he is, should have fucking took hand control and circled out, and you know got himself out of danger instead of. You know, let, let me gassed. take my hands. Let me take my hands out of the equation. Put them on the mat, and you know. Well, he looked gassed. Early. He looked gassed in that sequence. He shot and, a you know, the shot. Same, and, and, and the same thing happened against Rockhold. He got gassed, and uh, you know made mistakes. But I mean, this is another. This is another thing. You know, Chris. I hate. To, I hate to like second sit here and second guess him because I'm obviously not the one out there. You know, doing what he's doing and working my ass off like he is. You know, he's the he's the fucking man, and I'm not. But. Like, I just, like, his, and it happened against Romero. His shots, he's just getting so predictable. Little one dimension, same single leg, crackdown finish. Like, people are getting privy to it. Like, Romero, it took Romero 10 minutes, and then boom, cracked him with the flying knee when he when he went in for it. Right. And he was taking Musasi down with it. You know, I guess, got caught in the front headlock, and then the whole thing with the knees happen. Well, smart fighters will figure you out. They start to figure out your rhythm, and that's a lot of what Keith... Yeah, you're talking world-class guys. Yeah, that's a lot of what Keith predicates his system on, too, with his striking, which what he teaches everybody is, like, uh, you know, mixing it up, unpredictability and a variety of attacks so that people are constantly unaware of what your next move is. Um, mm. But, yeah, I, I don't know, man. The, the whole... That whole thing is... is I just kind of feel like you can't um, – the heat of the moment with those things are hard to tell. But at the end of the day, like, I, I don't think that they should have stopped the fight. Um, but what just came out was that apparently the doctor asked him – what month it was, and he said February. Yeah, I was gonna bring that part up. Oh, the month. See, you told me the other day he got the date wrong. Well, and I was like, what, I get the date wrong every day. Well, no, no, that's, that's what you they said. That's yeah. February. Okay. The article yeah. said he got the that's, date wrong. I didn't know it was a month. month. Yeah, they asked him. What I can month at least get the month. They asked him what it's month March. it was, and he said February. <laughs> so I mean, here's the thing, right? <laughs> and this yeah. is the shame so, of the the well, whole thing at this point is he he was already definitely concussed, and truth be told. In more likelihood than not, it go, it continues. He probably gets TK already after that. I mean, probably. I mean, that's you can't say for sure. You never know. Yeah. But yeah, you can't say for sure. But like, if you look at the like what, yeah, I mean, well, there's, there's plenty of times guys are in there fighting on instinct and they, yeah. they don't know what's going on. You know, that two big all, knees that, to the head. That, like, that's what happens all the time. It's hard to overcome. But that. now, like, so all right, so Megaliata, whatever his fucking name is, big doof. Tan Dan, Tan Dan, <laughs> Doofy Dan. He makes the mistake. Now it's called a legal knee. They said, "All right, we're gonna restart the fight. Even we'll, we'll even restart it in the front headlock position." Okay, that's what they should have done. But like you said, now was why been able to continue. Yeah, yeah. that that's like a uh, iffy spot because if they continue and Weidman gets fucking knocked out, like career-ending like knockout, yeah. gets out on his feet, bangs his head on the. Like that's uh, that's on the ref. That's on the doctor. That's it's just such a like a blue balls finish to what was otherwise apparently a really good fight. Yeah, I think no he, he was defense. definitely ahead. He was definitely ahead on the on the scorecard. Yeah, he yeah, definitely won round one. Yeah, I uh, the New York State Athletic Commission fucking sucks. Uh, how great was that, Daniel Cormier weighing? <laughs> Towelgate. 
Yo, towel game. <laughs> yo, I've done some funny things trying to make weight. I've never had the balls to blatantly try something like that. <laughs> Actually, well, no, I guess we're past the statute of limitations. I guess I had, I did have a teammate weigh in for me once. <laughs> <laughs> How did you pull that off? <laughs> Is this the dungeon? A, yeah, it was actually yeah. at a pretty <laughs> prestigious tournament, too. <laughs> How did you pull that off? <laughs> well, we're going who back you to were? the year. We're, we're going back to the year. This is More two. To, sorry, it's like two ten. Two thousand or two thousand and one. I was in. Um, I was in eleventh grade, and my buddy Mike Tatanjan was in tenth grade. He wrestled ninety six. I wrestled one hundred three. So um, it was a two day tournament upstate. You had to make weight in the morning. And then you had plus one to weigh out the first night. So I'm like three or four over. I got nowhere to run. I'm like, I do like a hundred laps around like a place like the size of this living room. <laughs> like, I'm just, I can't get the weight off. And there's this young, like high school looking age kid, maybe young college kid sitting there doing the weigh outs. You know, this is like old school, not very regulated. Like it was back in the, you know, like it is now. It's a little different. So, my buddy Tatunjan, he weighed out at 90, you know, 8 pounds, whatever it was. So, I'm like, yo, I give him, like, three Gatorades. I'm like, yo, get us close to one. I had to be 105 or 106, something like that. I'm like, yo, get as close to 106 as you can. When they change shifts, go in there and say you're me and weigh out. So, sure enough, they change shifts. A different kid comes in. He rubs, Tatanjan rubs the 96, because I read your weight class on your hands, rubs the 96 off his hand, goes in, hey, Matt Skangek steps on the <laughs> scale, it doesn't go, you know, it, and it was a balance scale, so all it had to do was move. Like, if it didn't move, you knew you were under. So he steps on, doesn't move, he was like, all right, you're under, turns and comes and finds me, I'm like, yo, did you get it? He's like, yeah, you got it. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I ran away with the toy. I was like, OW at the tournament, too, like. <laughs> <laughs> O-W? But yo, so what's OW? Outstanding, Outstanding wrestler. wrestler. Oh, oh. Like, so wait, hold on, hold on. What would have happened if you got caught? Like, what's the I penalty for get, the two of I you? guess you get disqualified for the tournament. Yeah, probably. You guess. You didn't even know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Cormier came in at like 11.56, and he was 1.2 over. Disappears for a few minutes. Two comes, minutes and 24 seconds. Comes back at like 11.59. And watch, see how he's holding the towel? It's so blatant. I don't even have to tell yeah. you why. There's no way he lost 1.2 pounds in two minutes like, and 24 look, seconds. Why is it just oh, and he's got double towels on now. Double towels. Look, he's pu- he's pushing he's his weight down. It's so two guys are holding dang. the towels on. It's either side. clear as day. And look, if you look at the guy, so we're watching the video. If you look to the guy, Steve, rewind this a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you look at the, the the guy on the right, the, the big fat guy there, you see him pulling tension on the towel. Too. Oh yeah, you can definitely see. It. And all of a sudden, too, he, he needs two towels because other one, that one towel probably. Wouldn't now, be what enough. I want to know is this is bullshit. How did well, he they get took it, that initial towel out? How does he get it? Around. How does yeah. he get it so perfect? One point two. You know how, like, when you fuck with somebody when they're weighing in and you, like, try to put your toe on the scale to make them, like, heavier? Yeah. But you can't steady No, because I'm a gentleman. I don't do shit like that. <laughs> well, you're not a wrestler, so... Yeah, that's like, that's like our best joke at wrestling. <laughs> exactly. But, like, so it's hard to steady your foot so that the digital scale will stop going like this, you know what I mean? So, like, how does he get it perfectly? He, he put 1.2 pounds of pressure perfectly on there so that he came up 205 on the button. That's fucked up. There's a lot Something's of fuckery. Fishy. There's yeah. a lot of fuckery that went on in this. Like, I don't know if it was New York State Athletic Commission that had a hand in it or what. Because and then, like, yo, the other conspiracy theory was. I'm glad that Rumble's fucking filed an appeal for this. Like, that's bullshit. Rumble Johnson weighed in at two. He came in like right before this and weighed in at. No, he came in he after. Really get, he sorry. came in between the two attempts. No, no, he came in right what? after this final one. He came yeah, in yeah, right after. Yeah, I think you're right. Two really like, isn't a lot, but it's he easy. came in two o three point eight, one point two under the two o five pound weight limit. You know what I'm saying? So do you think? They so like, did they the did they fuck with the scale of and course. move it down? I definitely 1. think they did. I definitely. But they even did. if they, but then if they did that, the towel trick, he would be lighter. You know what I mean? Like. Like what? This fuckery somewhere. There's fuckery. There's there's a, a lot of levels of fuckery here because the, here and here's my opinion. Here's what I think is that the New York State Athletic Commission. First of all, so there's there there you're there, the rule in New York State is that when you only get one weigh-in attempt, 
right? That's almost in all commissions, apparently. This is what I read, that you only get one wave attempt. One retry? You don't even get a retry. The second you step on and you don't make weight, that's it. You don't fucking make well, it. Well, you always read that, like, guys, like, second or third attempt on the scale. Apparently not for championships. Well, I know championships, they lose the one-pound allowance. Right, and apparently you only get one shot. In New York State, you get a second. That's what they said. This was like a rule nobody had any idea about, apparently. Now, I was always under the impression that you had until the scales close. Like, that's what I thought. That's how it always was with wrestling. That's how it was even for us. Like you. Well, you, no, now it, right, right, certain tournaments, Fargo's different. Fargo, you got one re, re, um, retry, and you can't leave the area. Oh really? You can't go out to the gym to run. You have to stay in the in the weigh-in area. Oh really? So you gotta like jump rope in the weigh-in area. And it's supposed to be kind of like that in folk style too, but nobody kind of pays attention to it. Okay. I don't know. They they had some weird rule behind that, and then um, I, what I what I think is this was the first real high-profile fight that was taking place um, outside of um, the guard two of guard. Yeah, yeah huh? like. And they did not want to lose it. But they, I mean, the New York State Athletic Commission is really digging themselves a big hole between um, between the the UFC at um, the Barclays. There's a lot of fuckery with that. Like, there's a lot of bad um, um, decisions. Like, Anderson Silva, Derek Brunson was, like, heavily criticized. Um, there's another one that was pretty heavily criticized. Oh, the Holly Holm fight, like... She got hit with two oh, fucking twice. illegal shots. Yeah, twice shots. she got hit after the bell. And like, no, that's fucked up. There was no uh, no points deducted, nothing. And now this one, dude, the day of the weigh-in, they scrapped a woman's fight. Because of the Preston Price. Titties. Right. Titties. This was booked. This was booked. That fight was booked well over that was a month. a good in fight, advance. too. That's the worst reason to cancel yeah. a fight. <laughs> so, actually, I did hear a little behind the scenes about this. I did hear some insider shit about that. Um... It was actually never scrapped. It was never officially called off. What happened was, um, they were seeing the doctors, and uh, they were checking, what, what's the name, Pearl Gonzalez? She was seeing one of the doctors, and they asked her, do you have implants? They couldn't, they couldn't hear her heartbeat through the stethoscope, through her chest implant. Bum, bum, bum. No. no. Really? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> All right, I got a lamp. All right, she was dead. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Damn it, Steve. They asked her straight out. Take it easy. Pull her up. She's pretty hot. Pearl oh, Gonzalez. Jesus. Yeah, I would. Um, it? 10 out of 10, I would. So, what's that? They, like the, the fucking hot who? kickboxer with the giant tits? Pearl Gonzalez. Gabby Garcia? <laughs> no, no. She's just a giant kickboxer. <laughs> giant kickboxer? She had the huge tits we were talking about on one of the other podcasts. Uh, Gina Carano? No, no, no. She's recent. Um, oh, what is she fighting in in that thing? What is the right to the? <laughs> that's a fight. She wore that to a fight. That's pretty. Crazy. I like her. <laughs> that's obviously she lost those, fights. dude. The girl she fought was a beast on the mat. All right. So anyway, she's seeing the doctor. And the doctor, you know, goes through the thing, and he's like, "Yo, you have implants." She said, "Yes." He's like, "You can't fight." And she stormed out of the doctor area, and was like all upset, and walked past Ariel Hawani, the reporter, and was like, "I'm not allowed to fight because I have breast implants." And Ariel Hawani just went crazy and started tweeting the story when they were actually never going to cancel it. The doctor said that because it was a rule he was aware of, but when they went back to the athletic commission, the athletic commission was like, "Ah." You know, it's not a rule that's going to be enforced because the rest of the athletic commissions across the country don't enforce that rule, so they weren't going to follow it. So it was actually never really going to be called off. Mm-hmm. But you had that happen. You had, uh, you know, the fucking towel gate, and then you had fucking tan dance thing. The athletic commission, New York State Athletic Commission, just Fuck it's up. a fucking shit show, man. Um, Google, Google, Pro Gonzalez, Instagram. Come on, Steve. You're the you're a terrible fucking searcher, man. He's he's already got it. There you go. She's hot. She can get it. Yeah. Well, actually, if it was me and her, I'd be getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not winning that fight. She's yeah. She's a she's a good one. But um. 
What was I just going to say? Um, <laughs> lost my whole train of thought. Sorry. Because of, of fake tits. Damn it. I'll have to. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Bring up Brianne Russillo. B R Y E. And space A N E. And then R U S S I L L O. And just bring up. Yeah, images. There you go. So she <laughs> fights? Yeah, she's a fighter. Where do I sign up? One of those two punching bags. Heavy bags. Oh, this is this chick from Long Island, yeah. She's from Long Island? Yeah, she's from Long Island. Oh, I don't even know that. Where does she train? Damn. Yeah, oh Kyle was She looks smart. Kyle was on. Kyle Kyle was talking about. Yeah, she uh yeah, right. Right. yeah, she's she's um she had like a couple, Jesus. I think, amateur you know what? boxing fights. With lungs like that, I bet she never gets gassed. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, she's from Long Island. Giants fan. Ah, gross. Oh, there's now. there's a lot of jokes to be made there. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> well done, sir. Well done. Uh, but um. Yeah, and the, those are apparently real too. So. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Not a chance. Yeah, those yeah. are apparently real. There's some girls who actually have real big boobs. It's a real thing. <laughs> yeah. But um. Yeah, New York State Athletic Commission just fucking up, fucking up everywhere, man. Fucking they, up. They're really not doing themselves any favors. It's gonna be like. Uh, it's gonna be a hard sell to get people to come back here if it's so shitty. Like a lot of a lot of fighters, are like yo, I'm not fighting in New York. It's just such a shit show. Yeah, it's it's a new athletic commission. You know, it's only a year old. No, well, the athletic commission's been around forever. It's just new to MMA, but they've been fucking dropping the ball forever. So, um, they're they're on, they have a lawsuit against them from because um, a negligence lawsuit. Some some boxer got fucking killed because they didn't give him the proper fucking medical examination right after, and he fucking incurred brain damage in the fight. Fucking died. And then I read an article. Um, Who was that? I don't know his name. I don't, you could Google it and find oh, out. Um, I read another article. There, there was an article about um, a fight that took place about three years ago between Eric Morales and some other guy. They both agreed to USADA testing. Eric Morales failed two USADA fucking tests. And they was like, yeah, all right, whatever. They did, they did three total tests. He failed two, passed one. And New York State was like, yeah, fuck it, let's fight. Sure. <laughs> like... They, they just. I don't think that's it. Um, no. What did you no. Google? Um, just Google. Um, uh, he, it's, uh, he's not necessarily from New York. He died in a New York fight. Yeah, he died in a fight in New York. So just Google like. Um, this doesn't make me feel good with Derek Rossi fighting in in a week and a half or whatever on the twenty second at Barclays. What's up? He gone. Oh, yeah, I'm Google going. the lawsuit, Steve. There's a lawsuit, or like a wrongful death lawsuit over, um, you know. You're a computer guy, and you're terrible with Google querying. Well, it's not dog, it's dog, dog duck, or whatever. Duck, duck, duck. Duck, duck, Querying. Querying means searching. This guy's yeah. suing. What'd you call me? He was beaten into exactly. a coma. There's a couple of these, man. Well, because there's been a couple, bunch of people who have died in combat sports, bro. That's why. No, no, I'm, they're not all deaths. I'm Dude, just saying there's a lot of lawsuits. Boxing's look up worse than boxing, anything. Tong Po, broken back. Yeah. No, see, you got you to Google. You got <laughs> to Google Kuma specific. Yeah. <laughs> um, suing Blood the New York sport. State Athletic Commission. Two moves. I was saying like you have to like. Oh, okay. <laughs> sorry. Not Chong Lee. Uh, I was Chong Lee. Sorry. Just N Y S A C. The hell's a Dim Mac? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry, we're getting real serious here, guys. We're talking fuck about death and shit like that. I was just trying to lighten the mood. It was good. You did a good job there. But um, Magomed. I don't know if that's it or not. Abdul Salamov. Whatever. It's nice not. We. <laughs> <laughs> what <did> you say? <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice Irish fellow. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's usually I'm the one line witty comment yeah. thing, but you're you're crushing me. You're right in, now. you're in a different seat. You are you're you are crushing me with the one liners right now. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so it was a Russian heavyweight boxer who got, like, paralyzed or something. Oh, dude, because boxing no, didn't let dead. you fight pretty much if you could stand back up. It's crazy. No, boxing is... You know what's crazy is boxing is actually better with stopping fights than MMA is. Boxing, really? yes, because you know what? There's this weird thing with MMA with how you one shot with the little gloves or a submission can win you a fight. Boxing, the cornermen will stop fights a lot. Like, your corner will protect you. They'll throw in the towel to stop you. You can't really throw in the towel. Your cornerman's not allowed to stop fight. You can't throw in the towel in MMA. And there's never been... Like, between rounds, they can't be like, he's not coming back out. They can they between rounds, but not doctor, in the middle of the fight. Like, you could see guys in boxing jump up on the apron and stop the fight in the middle of a round when you're, if their guy's getting fucked up. And they'll even their corner men will stop you, like, listen, you're done. But you'll, you'll hear it sometimes. Listen, if you don't start changing things in this round, I'm stopping this fight. You'll never hear that in MMA. Never. And it's, like, a, it's a big thing that's being brought up lately is because, like... And that was one of the things uh, that they were talking about. They were panning... Um, Long go for because Long was like, why men would have fought? Why men would have fought? We'd let him fight. And people, like, you know, because you can comment on things, the, the internet commenters were like, you don't care about your guy? He fucking said the wrong month and you would still let him go out to fight? Like, at what point do you care about, like, hey man, live to fight another day? And that doesn't happen a lot of them. You've ne I've never heard a corner man be like, listen, I'm going to stop this thing. Or, you know, if you asked, if you asked any of the corner men, would you, have, would you, have, keep a fighter from going back out there they'd be like no I don't, I don't know why I don't know if it may be because there's less rounds or whatever but I don't know you don't you just don't see that in MMA in boxing they, they your own guys will stop you you know I don't know I don't know what the maybe it's because MMA is so new or I don't know but, yeah that's crazy I never really thought about that bunch of fooey I've never, I've never heard a trainer say that. Well, but like, oh, sorry. No, no, please. Uh, but like the ref, I feel like it's the the ref stops the fight in MMA before the boxing. Like you, you can get knocked down hard, but if you can get up in ten seconds in boxing, well, that's just a rule though. But like I've seen, I've seen refs step in plenty of times in boxing when the guys taking a beat. I've seen them step in before yeah. the guys go down. Oh yeah. Hey, yeah. 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 The refs, the refs stopped. But you also see a guy go down and be allowed to get back up. Well, I mean seconds. that's yeah, but yeah, that's you also see how many punches Rocky Balboa took. <laughs> Come on. This is one of my best quotes ever. Uh, Rocky Balboa took so many punches. Sylvester Stallone's retarded. <laughs> that was such a good one, and I only remember this because it came up recently. That was so good that we were watching it. And he said that, and I put it on Facebook, and it came up as a memory recently. It was like, you know, on this day, <laughs> in March or whatever. I caught Rocky Five on TV not too long ago. Oh, yeah. Did you awesome. change the channel? Rocky Five is the worst one. Yeah. Oh, wait, Five is four. Is worth five with Tommy Gunn? Oh, yeah, no, it was terrible. My ring's outside. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yo, hey, yo, Tommy, I didn't hear no bell. <laughs> <laughs> My ring's outside. It's some of the best one liners in that one though. Because they're so cheesy. Well, they're all cheesy. So cheesy. Have you seen Creed? That was great. Creed is awesome. I love Creed. Creed's really good. Uh, Rocky Balboa. Michael B. Fun. Jordan, the Michael Jordan of acting. <laughs> Rocky Balboa was also phenomenal. <laughs> He's the that. Michael Jordan of acting. Which which ending did you like the best? I like the one where I Rocky just can't Rocky believe Bob. they had the balls to name the main character. Mason the Line Dixon. Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty bad. And throw Antonio Tarver into the role of all yeah. people. Of Antonio Tarver of knocking out Roy Jones Jr. fame. Tarver was a good boxer. He's, good bo he he was, he, he's, he's quite shot. the soft looking boxer. Well, I mean, he's old now. That was the only big win he ever had. Well, I don't know for sure, but. No, Tarver was legit. That's his biggest. Well, yeah, I mean. Especially in that time period, that's when Roy Jones Dude, was. Roy Jones, Roy Jones, so dirty. You ever watch like a highlight reel of Jones? He was Dude, dirty. Dude, I remember in his prime. I don't remember who he was fighting. <laughs> he was just so ridiculous that he played a semi-pro basketball game the morning of the stuff of fight. <laughs> Fuck! It's just my warm-up, son. It's fucking ridiculous. Him and. Uh, Bernard Hopkins are like not even real people. Like I can't believe they were still both 
decent boxers so late. Bernard Hopkins more so than Roy Jones. Like Bernard Hopkins was still. He just got knocked out of the ring, bro. Yeah, but he's like Ooh. fifty right now. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Actually, that was his first yeah. knockout loss. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. And he did some time, right? I don't know what he, I don't know what the crime was, but he did some time. I think he did it before his boxing career really took off, though, yeah. right? Yeah, I don't I know if it was like when he was, if it was young and. Then he really got into boxing, and I, I think that's how it was. I don't, I don't know for sure, but uh, what's that guy's name? He's from, he's from Shirley. Joe Smith. Smith. Joe Smith. Yeah. Joe Smith. Yeah. yeah. We we got he's two prides of Shirley. Joe Smith. Yeah. The guy that knocked him out is from Shirley. Yeah. yeah. yeah Joe Smith Jr. He's from right. Joe Smith Jr. William Floyd or Longwood. William Floyd. And yeah. then Longwood's got Cletus the Hebrew of Hammer. Of course. Just so you know, youth. Lacrosse, that's how I just beat Longwood seven to one. I'm just saying, Chase on the team. So, uh, yeah. Well, you know what? How old Chase now? Six. Six. Yeah, he's the size of a twelve year old. So it's not fair. Just saying. You <laughs> know, come see us in high school, bro. Okay. <laughs> when he's too tall to play lacrosse, <laughs> he's gonna be taller than the defense stick. I see. Isn't your defensive stick supposed to be the same height as you? I, th- I don't know. I, don't know. Like I saw last night a car uh, on Main Street parked in front of Barbecue, a license plate that said Chicks with Sticks. <laughs> 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 I assume they were the cross players. Maybe, well, maybe not. Be at, of course they'd be at Barbecue. I don't know if they were at Barbecue. I don't, I don't know what you mean by that. Barbecue oh, sucks. sucks. Uh. <laughs> That's got to be the worst restaurant on Main Street. Uh, yeah, it's, it's you know what I'm kind of uh, impartial to it, I guess. Um, so right out of college, I got a shitty job selling insurance, which I did for two months. But I had to like canvas areas of people who already had the the policy, and it was combined insurance. Actually, FJ has it. <laughs> it's it's like half like you get hurt, you miss work. It doesn't hurt to miss work, kind of thing. You know, yeah. like you get paid for hospital business. Is that your, shit is that your number one number one sales? Yeah, match? combined. I, you, I, yeah, I sold that for two months. Just as good as money. But the owner of Barbecue had it, and like I was in the area, and he was up for renewal. So I just stopped in. I'm like a fucking Wednesday. There was nobody there, and like I just said to the hostess, "Hey, is blah 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 here? You know, the, I'm with Combined Insurance. He's up for renewal. I was just wondering if I could talk to him." She goes and grabs him. He comes out of the back, like, storming out of the back and, like, fucking cursing me out, yelling at me, blah, blah, blah. Like a total asshole. What? Yeah. What did he say? I don't remember exactly what he said. I remember him being Why an asshole. Why did he cursing at you? He was, like, he was like, you know, you got to call and set up an appointment, blah, blah, blah. And I was trying to explain to him. I'm like a 24-year-old kid. I'm like, oh, I was just in the area. I figured I'd stop in and maybe set something up with you. You don't have to fucking write me a check right well, now. FaceTime you know, and like, you know, hey, 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 you, you know, it, it's like, it's like I, you know, I wasn't being an asshole. I wasn't like, you gotta write me a check for renewal now. It's like, you're for renewal in two months. Like, fucking, you know, let's set something up so I could just come by. Well, that's the last time I go there. Yeah. I, I haven't really been there. Fucking and asshole. you know what? I hate, <laughs> he's such, he's a really big Mets fan. He's part of the Seven Line Army. Like, that, 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 I hate that. Fuck him. Because we're into the same stuff. Like barbecue and Mets? <laughs> yeah. I love beer both of them. I love barbecue Mets? Every word you guys just said, I love. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was a jerk, so I love barbecue. The sweet potato fries are pretty good there, though. No, they're yeah, not. Yeah, fuck them. No, I don't like good. sweet potato fries. The one thing what? I... The one thing hey, I do like out. about their wings... It's over. Get out. I don't like sweet Six potato fries. Six-bar podcast! I, I like their wings. That's the one thing they got, cause they, well, they they're like their wings. No, they're like uh, actual wings off like a chicken. Like if you get a rotisserie chicken, the bigger wings that you get that like have the bend size, in them, yeah. full well, size wings. Cut. Yeah, they're those are the wings they bring out, which are cool. Will you fly? You know, like you wings that they serve are just those cut, right? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like if you work in a restaurant, when they the way they make wings, I thought they were from buffaloes. Fuck, no, they they take like a big meat cleaver. I thought they were baby chickens. <laughs> no, it's, it's two pieces. So like that, that whole that, that it makes sense, yeah. But I never really thought about and you it. Just take a big meat cleaver and go, and fucking split them. Okay, that's it. How to double your money? I just seen that rainbow come over you. <laughs> the more you know. 
Dropping any stuff. knowledge on the Six Bar Podcast. That's it. Dropping knowledge all day. <laughs> I'm dropping shits in half the time recently. We got ourselves a squatty pod. Yeah, I heard about that, huh? That's awesome. In case you gotta go before you go. The what? squatty pot is uh, awesome. We can take these mics in there. Wow. Yeah, that's... Let's, let's <laughs> that. let's that's have a family <laughs> thing, so you guys have fun in there? I'll be out here. I'm also gonna stop recording. Yeah. But you can just take the mic in there. Just... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I'm a fan. It, well, what was the phrase? What was the term you used? It. What? It cut my time in half? That and. I. I, I, I don't I'm, I'm done. Just you before I get my phone out? It falls right out. <laughs> oh, yeah, it falls right out of you. It does. Everything's lined up, just fucking right out. I saw, like, an even cooler one that's adjustable on, on Facebook today. Up or down or out? Up and down, really. And then it actually has a little thing in the in the middle where like you could like it's called the yoga. Uh, it's, it's, it's 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 got, got like a little thing you, you could like roll your feet on, like you know in case yeah, it doesn't like squat, you know, in case it doesn't come out right away and you know you're just hanging on the toilet for a little bit, like in between where your feet go, like there's a little thing like you could roll your foot, you know your foot out and look at cool. stretching. Like let's uh, let's make one called the Namas Ducey. <laughs> Great. Get all speedy. Namas douchey. It'll, it'll help you expel your ego. <laughs> <laughs> shit that ego right out of you. My shit don't still stink. This could be favorite. a lot of shit. This is still one of my favorite commercials. It's fucking. Yeah, we can't play that again. No, I'm not playing it. Not, don't play it again, but. If you Squatty haven't seen it, awesome. yeah, look it up on YouTube. Big the Squatty Potty and the Unicorn Changing the Way You Poop. Fucking How did hilarious. we get here? How did we end up How do we get anywhere? <laughs> Okay. We're talking about Vodka, like, whatever that Kratom thing we had earlier was. It was, it was a couple of, a lot of things happened. We went from fucking uh, Roy Jones Jr. and Bernard Hopkins to taking a shit. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. But yeah, and two boxers from Shirley representing. Me and Matt are from Shirley, by the way. That's right. Everybody oh, knows and Steve that. lives there now. Yeah. Oh, what? Well, I'm not from the, no, I guess I'm not from there. I've been living there for a little while now, though. Like seven years or so. Yeah, he chose to live there. We it's too long. There. Yeah. He didn't, nobody chooses to live there. You either I, I born there, there, or you can't afford to live there. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, listen, listen. Hey, I listen, listen. This town used to be a piece of shit, too. I know, I'm upset about it. I used to get street cred with being from Patchogue. Now it's like, oh, the place is nice. <laughs> Where's your no, he on? went there and he couldn't walk away. That was the problem. Oh, Jesus oh. Christ. I just don't like people, so I drove Rolled in and couldn't leave. <laughs> and then went a little further. And there I am. Yeah, let's talk about that. Because Patchogue is just... Now it's gone. I used to like I used to tell people I'm from Patchogue and get weird looks. Now it's like, oh, I heard the restaurants mm-hmm. there are great. Patchogue is not yours anymore. No, it's everyone it's else's. You, yeah, you, it's just the we, tourist attraction. Exactly. And you guys young. are locals. You're the Orlando. When, when we were young, <laughs> people didn't go to Main Street. No. But you did not fucking go to Main Street. There's nothing there either. It was, it was, it was, it was like we were in high school. And Goodfellas. You could go to... Goodfellas. You want to get shot, you go yeah, to Yeah, you could go to Goodfellas and get into a fight. And buy drugs. Yeah. When we were I in high school, school, everyone went to Port <laughs> Jeff. Yeah, we went to Port Jeff. Everyone went Downport. Yeah. We used to go Downport, too, yeah. yeah I, can't I, tell downport. You, I can't tell you the last time I went to a bar. Downport, downport. downport is starting to... They're, they're, they're making a little re- revitalization. They're... Not quite back yet, but they're they're still. I mean, during the summer and shit like that, it's still it's packed down there just because you know people come right off the ferry, they go, they walk through the town and shit like that. But they're starting to get um, some better restaurants and shit. The bars, uh, Bur- Burology is pretty fucking cool. That bar down that there, one of our first episodes, right? Burology? Not first, or first twenty or whatever. Yeah, something like that. It was like a, the second... That was your first third, on-site. Uh, that was our no, first... No, shout out to Terrence no, from no, Neurology. Yeah, we had the... Uh, no, Toast, Toast was our first. Oh, okay. Neurology Terrence. was 22. Yeah, Toast was Terrence first. Terrence was the fucking man. Terrence, Terrence was, was awesome. awesome. It was a good Terrence guy. I like that guy. We should reach him and see if... Uh, Toast talk to was... Him. Toast was before that. 12. Yeah. Okay. Toast was our first. Old Town Gardens was second. And then uh, and then Neurology. <laughs> yes. But yeah, Old Town. Uh, but Old yeah, I I never do downport ever anymore. They're um, Jesus Christ! Sorry, it's my bad. It's all good. 
Well, yeah, they're, they're Tommy's. Something. Yeah. Post up on a booth, bend the back. Just because? The... Like good old times? Get nostalgic. Go to, go to Tara's. Remember when that Jaeger bomb? Tara's is Remember the when bomb. the Jaeger bombs video came out? Yo. Jaeger oh, yeah. bombs. Not right bombs. now, bro. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Muscle milk. <laughs> we, went, we went to Tommy's and just sat down and just ripped Jaeger bombs one night. It was the last time I drank Jaeger in my life. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. I used to go out of physical therapy in St. Charles over there and go up that fucking hill in a wheelchair <laughs> to get a beer at fucking Harry's afterwards. I swear to God. Um, That's a heavy hill, fucking you know, hill, too. It's not yeah. a joke, that fucking hill. And you're going up in a wheelchair. Incline. If you fuck up, you're going backwards. You ain't stopping. Like, that's the end oh, of your yeah, life. For sure. you're, yeah. you're hitting the sound. Your crippled ass is dead. Yeah, you're going to Connecticut. So, uh, uh, you'd be working. <laughs> you better up. hope the ferry's had a stop. There's traffic you. up this hill, and people are cheering me on. Yeah, man, you can do it. And I was like, fuck you, help me. It's what a beard. This isn't like <laughs> yeah, the yeah. No one was like, let me yeah, walk yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not training for anything. This isn't <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't want to help him. He's too proud. Yo, that, that's <laughs> just that, that one movie that they saw <laughs> where the fucking, the crippled guy is too proud, and... So I can do it myself. Like, oh, fuck you, dude. Do no. it yourself. They're like, yeah, Piece man. Shit. They roll their window. Yeah, man, you can do it. I'm you like, got fucking, it'd be easy if you helped. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I'm not the proud cripple. Give me some fucking help. I just want a Guinness and a fucking bunch of wings. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. But yeah, I did that shit for fucking weeks. Yeah. The good old days in Townport. I remember that was the first time. This was before I bounced. The first time I thought maybe I could be a bouncer was was with you at Tommy's because we were like, yeah, it was so crowded. I think it was like a Thanksgiving Eve or something. And Steiger was bartending, so we went and hung out, and uh, like we were right by the bathroom, and some guy like threw the bathroom door open, and it hit Matt in the back. And Matt fucking just shoved the door back into the guy's face. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy came out like, yo, what the fuck? What the fuck? And then they're like in each other's face and they just fucking tie up with each other like they're I, in a wrestling oh match. My God. Oh, I had Justin hold my beer. Yeah. And I'm like, we're going to do this? <laughs> like, I just, boom, collar tie. Yeah, collar tie. Just with me. He had no I just came right inside. He had no idea what to do. Like, yeah. And I, I was, I and was, then, and then, I was right behind the guy. And then lunchbox by you, dude. I just grabbed the guy, threw him to the ground. I'm like, no, you stop. And then I go to Matt, stop it. And then I was like, talk. I was like, I could be, I could be a bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that was funny. That was the first time I thought I could bounce. And look at me, ten years later. Look at you. You look know, you. like just, get, just getting your fucking one of the top ten bouncers of Davis Park. <laughs> Top ten. There's only like eight of us. So. <laughs> top eight. Top eight. I'm, top I'm talking about. I'm talking about all the fillings too. <laughs> you know, there's a couple fillings that are better than me. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> That's adorable. I've unfortunately been doing this for almost twenty years. That's crazy. Yeah, you're, you're, you're old 17. AF. Oh, you're old AF. AF. Well, I started when I was seventeen. So yeah, you're still old AF. I'll yeah. always say that to you because I'm so much younger. You're not that much younger. <laughs> I'm four? Four is a number. <laughs> <laughs> four is a number. Yes, I do. Four is a number. Yeah. Yes. So, back to our guest, Matt. <laughs> what are you getting into right now? Kratom. Kratom and kombucha. You ever had Kratom? No, but I've heard great things mm, about it. It's awesome. Yeah. Don't, don't take it now. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely not what? now. I'm off tomorrow, so. Well, he's, he's got to drive home and stuff, so. But, no, I've, I've told him about it. I take it before wrestling every yeah. every time. No, it's good for any, like, aches and pain. Like, it's a mood elevator, but also probably the best painkiller oh, that definitely. you've ever taken, like, and no ill side effects to it. Yeah. It's awesome. But you could take too much and be retarded on the couch. Yeah. Like yeah. I said to them before, like, I've, I've taken... You know, usually, uh, like, before practice, wrestling practice, I'll take one tablespoon, and, you know, I'll be good. I'll drink it over an hour at wrestling practice, feel no pain. Good. I take two tablespoons. I'm on the couch forgetting to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> like, you, you, you ever get so high, you're, like, on the couch, and then all of a sudden you're like, <gasps> like, oh, shit, I, when was the last time I breathed? Like, that's how, that's I, think, how I get it. I don't know if it's because I'm smart or just not doing drugs right, but I've never forgot to breathe. <laughs> I don't not, think, yeah, well, that's the thing. He, he never actually forgets to breathe. It's it's the thought. It's, of it. it's the thought of it. Yeah. Because if you forget, if you forget to breathe, you're dead. Yeah. 
or unconscious. I know, Mr. Overall. Come on, really? I've been what, on, what am I dealing with? I've been on the road either to or from work right and been oh, like, all of a sudden I'll look around and be like, wait, on. Fuck you. am I going to or from work? Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, that might become a thing. <laughs> like, or like, like, you're like, oh, I thought we were at exit 30, we're at exit 50, you like, you time travel. <laughs> like, how did I get here? Yeah. Oh, I've t- done that, yeah. Yeah, when you're so fucked up, you time travel for sure. This I time traveled fucked up. This is just driving once. to work every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. well, that, that's, I'll tell you just what. Just like, out, I, trying to yeah. stay awake. That's what that is. First, First you awake, but just just when you're in that routine so many times, like, um, that was like probably two weeks ago or so, I was I was uh, driving somewhere with my son, with Chase, and we were going somewhere specific, and we were taking the same route that I take to work. So I jump on the expressway and like fucking my brain shut off. Autopilot. Just, yeah, yeah, autopilot. And he's like, is this dad, we almost there? I'm like, yeah. And I'm like, oh fuck, we drove two pa- two exits past where we were supposed to go. Yeah. I'm like, Jay, sorry man. Like I, I was I was in autopilot mode, like, you know, and it was a Saturday, like, but just because I was so used to that same path, like my neural pathways were set and that neural was it. Like pathways. I pathways. That's not a number. Time. <laughs> but that, but that you know, it's it's with everything like that. Like that's what you know. Even fighters, I'm sure wrestlers and stuff like that. Like you get so used to doing certain oh, yeah, things, routine. like you know, count, countering muscle memory. Yeah, muscle memory. It's it's the same thing. Like when you, I mean, cause you, if you really think about it, like you spend probably driving to and from work, other than working, like, more time doing that than anything else in your fucking life. So just to uh, break it down. Muscle memory is a uh, neural pathway. So they, they, they say you do anything. If you do anything enough times, what happens is you start creating these neural pathways and you build up what's called um, a myelin sheath. It's like the like a little fatty um, amino acid that coats um, cells, nerve endings, and these neural pathways. And the, the more you myelinate it is because you've built that pathway over and over again. And so that's why, like, um, Freddie Roach is the perfect example. He's got Parkinson's. You know, so you, like, we can't hold the pencil, but he's done boxing for so long. Those pathways are so sharp Throw a fucking that shot at me. he could still sit there and hold pads like a pro, yeah. and you'd never be able to tell that he had Parkinson's because those pathways are so heavily myelinated and so fucking sharp that it's just, it's unconscious, and those pathways in his brain are just... That's why Michael J. Fox could still act. Yeah. So tell. anyway, wrapping this fucking bitch up. <laughs> no wait, before before we go, um, we were really going. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I didn't know we're approaching two hours. I'm sure, but um, uh, Aaron Pico is gonna start fighting soon for Bellator. He's an animal. Yeah, I, I want I want to know what you think about Aaron because I love him. I oh, love, I'm dying to watch. Him I fight. love the way he um, kid's a psycho. Yeah, I love the way he approached it. He's like, he, what, he, he drop out? Or he got homeschooled? He, he didn't drop out of high school, so but he, he got could, homeschooled. He could the, wrestle you know, on the How much know, homeschooling he level. actually paid attention yeah. to, who knows. But, uh, he, you know, he's never been about school. He's, you know, he's always been about combat sports. Yeah. Like, he did, like, pancreation and, and, like, boxing, like, as a little kid, like, Golden Gloves boxing in California as a little kid. And then he won everything you could possibly win as a high school wrestler and then with three years left of high school to go said alright screw this I'm wrestling freestyle and freestyle only and he wrestled on the uh, he lost senior senior circuit he lost lost the Molinaro yeah he lost the Molinaro last year at the Olympic trials you know by an eyelash he was almost yeah representing America for the Olympics as what was he he, 19 years old at the uh, last Olympics yeah something like that Yeah, Yeah. if you ask me I think he was the better Better wrestler. Mm. Rumor has it that Aaron Pico was responsible for um, Josh Thompson pulling out of not this last fight, the fight before. He had, I have he, heard that. He pulled out um, apparently with a concussion and supposedly Got Pico is the one who dropped him. I, I don't doubt it. The kid's a fucking kid's a hammer. His fucking collar tie. His he's got the heaviest hands in the game, bro. He's, he's an animal. Yeah. I, th- I think he's supposed to fight this summer, right, for Bellator? I don't know. I, I don't think he's going to be debuting for quite some time. No? I remember when he signed, they said he's... They signed him in advance because they know he's going to be good, but they're giving him... T- 
time to you know pursue his wrestling goals first. Yeah, no, I'm pretty yeah. sure he's he said like, yo, I'm done with the wrestling. Like, it's Google time, it. Time Let's go, Aaron Pico. P- type in Aaron Pico Bellator debut. Yep, just. Yep. There you go. Um. But yeah, I I, I love oh, it. Imagine he's, he's, he's there you go at the garden. garden at the garden. Really. Is that real? Imagine he was wrestling college right now. Fake news. <laughs> June 24th, Madison Square Garden. You know, somebody's got a birthday oh, wow. right around then. <laughs> 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 Do you really? 29th. Ooh. Well, uh, we're going to look in the tickets. Let's, definitely. Let's, uh, let's talk off air. Maybe a uh, six hour podcast fucking field trip. I like it. We'll bring microphones. I have several friends that are fighting on that. Um, I also, Eric and I work every Bellator event through CompuStrike. Yo, could you imagine fucking recording a podcast on the train in to go see this fucking fight? Or a ringside. (laughs) That could happen too. (laughs) Um, Get some media credentials and shit. That's awesome. See, I knew he was fighting soon. Chandler's fighting on that car too? Yep. Lightweight channel. Oh, what? Well, Silver go, versus Chun. Ch- Fedor. Fedor's fighting. What? Montreal. This is true. Wanderlei. Yeah. Not, not Anderson Silva. No. Oh, yeah, Wanderlei. Yeah. Wanderlei. But yeah, you said I'd rather, Silva. I'd rather, watch Wanderlei. 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 I'd rather watch Wanderlei. Two of my boys are fighting this car too. Uh, my buddy um, Hugh McKenna, um, he's fighting. And uh, my buddy Anthony Giacchina is fighting as well. Uh, they're both on the undercard. Two uh, local New York guys, um, both fucking. I've beasts. always been a Fedor fan. Oh, so Pico's fights to be announced. Oh yeah, well, Pico's on one eighty. Hold on, go. Can you go back to that? Is this the same? Because yeah. same Beltro NYC and Beltro one eighty. Almost like it's two different things. Yeah, it does look weird how they word that. Go to the top of it. Let's read it. Let's see. No, no, one eighty at yeah. MSG. Yeah. Okay. Bellator 180 shows the lead-in for the pay-per-view Bellator MYC. Oh, oh, so they're both they're, they're both, both same they're day both in the MSC. same yeah, but uh, so one's a, I got it. Okay. So the Bellator 180 is the undercard, I'm assuming. Right, yeah. and then the Bellator NYC is going to be a pay-per-view. Event. Right. Okay. Same event, really, but just packaged yeah. differently. Yeah. So it's going to be basically the undercard. Is it, it's going to be you yeah. know there's, it's going to be um, like every UFC event. There's the, a lot of good the um, are on. Local New York talent on that undercard, man. Um, like I said, my buddy, my buddy Hugh, he's fighting on it. Um, Who? Hugh McKenna. Who? Oh, I see what you do. <laughs> uh, my buddy Anthony Giacchina, um, he's fighting on it. And then uh, this guy Sergio De Silva, another guy out of Long Island MMA. Hugh and, and Sergio from Long Island MMA, they're both fighting on that. Anthony Giacchina. Um, trains out of Maxim. He's a real good dude. Uh, I, I I got into train with uh, all three of those guys. Um, they're all fucking real good. It's Hugh, I, I trained with Hugh since he was since he first started. Man, he came in as like a 18 year old kid, white belt, awesome dude. I think this is his second pro fight. Um, Anthony, Anthony's. I think this is his second or third pro fight. He's an awesome dude too, man. Um, so it's gonna be cool to get to see. Some of my friends and training partners get to fight on this shit. It'll be real fucking cool. So shout out to those guys, Hugh, Anthony, and Sergio. Um, check those guys out. Um, I think Hugh's Instagram is like Humongosaurus Rex. Ah, nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Hugh's awesome. He's a good dude. Um, I don't know. Anthony's is his name. I think it's like A G Aquina. And I'm sorry, bro. I don't know how to spell your name. But uh, shout out to you. Shout out to Sergio also. Also, I don't remember what Sergio's Instagram is, but I thought- all those guys. I'd love to go to that. I'm definitely an Aaron Pico fanboy, which yeah. sounds a little gay. But I'm I wonder okay if Pico's going to be fighting a, a local guy. Yeah. What what uh, weight's Pico fight at? Your weight. He wrestled at the Olympic. <laughs> <laughs> Strap him back Fine. on, bro. Time to fight. Oh, that's what you, I thought like that you were making a like, joke. He wrestled the Olympic trials <laughs> last year at 145, but I want to say he's going to fight. You ain't 145. I want to say he's going to fight. I could make 145. I could definitely make 145, but it would. I would have to kill myself. To I was going to say you'd look like you were dying. Yeah, you'd be so ripped, bro. <laughs> Team so hot right now. 
abs. Oh, look, there you go. Go down, go down, go down, go down. Aaron Pico drops Josh Thompson's sparring session, yeah. apparently. But yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a big fan. You know, and as a young kid, he's like, "Eh, school's not for me. I want to be a combat guy, combat sports." I wonder how much like money like his parents like have. Like, I think his parents like had some money. Like, and, like we're able, yeah, you because know, this kid hmm. traveled all over the place. Like the dude Valentine. Well, he was making money from sponsorships too. Apparently, he got a lot of cash too. I heard. Not until he decided to drop out, though. You know. What I mean? oh, yeah. But like he's been he's been traveling the world with this guy Valentin Kalika, who's a really uh, good coach. But like, p- you know, they kind of put each other on the map. And uh, now Kalika actually like coached Helen Rulis, helped her win the gold medal. I just year. watched her the other day. Um, Did you video. watch that flow thing? Yeah, was it her and uh, um, oh her and Kendall Cross? Yeah, yeah. Kendall Cross. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's pretty good looking too. Oh yeah, she is pretty good. Yeah, good. I think Flow uh, like, Wrestling just came out the other day with. Uh, yeah, they did a whole documentary. Yeah, right? they, it's a, I think I it's a two part, yet. like the Mako thing yeah. and the Jaden Cox thing. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. But yeah, it's it's Helen Marulis. Girls can't wrestle, and they just came out with part one the uh, other day. I didn't get to watch it yet. I'll watch it this weekend, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, she's a babe. And she is. Um, I mean, managed, she's no Gabby Garcia. She's managed oh, by dude, can we talk uh, about this? Do you, know who Gabby, do you know who Gabby Garcia is? Awesome. No. no, yeah. Well, stop your, the your fucking brother's got the weirdest <laughs> obsession with this girl. Now, she's a beast. She's a fucking jiu-jitsu black belt. She's a beast. Good images. She's, but she's gigantic. She's not attractive. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, wait, Go to this one to the right. Where, I think where I she was bulked shit. up and then when she slimmed down. She's about 200 pounds shredded. She's you a big girl. That's the same chick? With the yellow and the, yeah. Yeah. And the abs? Yeah. Pull, pull up the, yeah, even, even the large, huge. like How the is large. This possible? Is that right? She is huge. That's a big bitch. Yo, for real. But on her Instagram, I can't look away, dude. She looks pretty in a lot of pictures. Steve, pull up her Instagram. Uh, There's one. Uh, uh, I can't look away. She's a she's a a beautiful car accident. <laughs> <laughs> He's like super obsessed with this. Crazy obsessed. She liked one of his pictures or a couple of his That's pictures. That's not her. And, no, and it was That's not her. All he could talk about for a couple of days. Oh yeah, and when she liked my picture, yeah, we're pretty much dating. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say things are pretty serious. Yeah, but yeah, acting no. uh, though. Honestly speaking, I think Helen Rulis is actually better looking overall yeah. because Gabby's bigger than me. But uh, you, I think you just want to get dominated. Well, it, wait, 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 scroll up, scroll up, and look at the video in the middle there. Up one, up. Uh, up one. Sorry. Oh, that one. Watch that one. So it's her. It's her doing cro- Orange Coast CrossFit video. And she's yeah. Jacked. What is that? Two twenty-five. Yeah. So two plates on there. 225. Just How big is she? She's gigantic. She's she's. Are those rubber plates the same amount of weight as the normal? Yeah. Ones? Yeah. She's yeah. Um, she's a big she's a big girl. Like yo, even though like Helen Marula, she fights at like 135. Like she's not a small chick. Dude, you're doing overhead presses with 225. You are not small. Bring up Helen Marula, Steve. But yeah, Marula is definitely. Who's uh Helen? Who's who's uh Megan? M A R O U L I S. What the hell's her name? M A. I thought. M A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely more attractive than yeah, Gabby. Yeah, she's like, and but she's girly looking. Gabby's my bae. Gabby Garcia looks a little bit manly. I can't look away from Gabby. I think Skanga's more feminine. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I better tits. Wait, go, go, up, go, go back go to, up. The, to the right. To the right. right. Yeah, right there, yeah. Who's, the Who's her friend? Shit. <laughs> or lag Hunter? Look at the difference, though. Oh. Ah. Those oh. abs. Yeah, click, go back to Helen. Yeah. Click the friend. With Orlag Hunter, let's see her. Hey. she a wrestler too? A wrestler from Ireland? Who knows? I'd wrestle her. Wow. Look at those fun bags. If you're going to be obsessed with a girl, uh, pull up Mackenzie Dern. Be obsessed She's with her. She's a jiu jitsu chick, right? Yeah. There's a lot of good looking women the in combat sports. I, ever, I the like one it. girl I ever wrestled was pretty cute. Oh, uh, yeah. Kelly. Uh, Mary Kelly. Mary Kelly, yes. Mary Kelly. Matt? Ashley Olsen. Matt, 
in his junior year, right? Went to Fargo, yeah. which was the national tournament yeah. Yeah. for yeah. freestyle, yeah. and wrestled we go a woman's yeah. world champ. Mary Kelly was a woman's yeah. world yeah. champ. It's one, of, it's one of my favorite wrestling stories. Oh, yeah. we just ran out of time, bro. I'm sorry. <sighs> <laughs> just kidding. Oh, my God. Look at his butt, too. Oh, yeah, Mackenzie there would get it. It's a nice butt. Well, I'm saying, if you're going to be obsessed with the fucking fighting shit, like, you're obsessed with her. Right? I'm not going to be obsessed with a normal, good-looking girl. I'm going to be obsessed with, like, the giant. Ooh. All right. So let's hear let's hear the Fargo story. Oh, uh, so I always said, if I ever lost to a girl, I'd quit. <laughs> always said that. Never had to wrestle a girl. But you I never always... wrestled Gabby Garcia? No. <laughs> She would fuck you up. She's in my weight class, class, not his. Weight classes, bro. All right, but so now my junior year, in between, in between junior and senior year, I'm at Fargo, freestyle nationals, biggest tournament in the in the country. You know the year. My first round, my first round match, I draw this chick, Mary Kelly, from Illinois. Illinois, I always pronounce the S. Illinois, yeah. Illinois. Uh, but she happened to be, at the time, she was the cadet world champ for girls. What does that mean? The age group, 15 and 16. Or 14, 15, whatever it was back then. So, I'm like, yo, this, this chick's a, a world champ. What if she, which is the real deal? <laughs> like, this, I, I can't go back to a wrestling mat after I lose to a chick. Like, what, you know, this is way, way, I was way more nervous for this match than anyone in my life. And I'm like, holy shit, like, I... So nervous. So I go out there and we tie up. She she went to hit a shot. She, I was like, yo, she knows what she's doing. And I was like, yo, snap out of it. Slam the shit out of her. Tech her in like a minute. <laughs> yeah. yeah <it laughs> Tech her in like a minute. Got was, off the mat. Dude, that was. And like I said, yo, she was cute too. Like when we, we see her. And he was like, yo, what you doing after this, girl? Well, like I came off the mat. All my boys were like, yo, did you like cop a field? Did you like, you know, do one of those? And I'm like, no, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't want to get my like, ass kicked. I was, kicked. Fo I was, I was focused <laughs> out there. I was trying to, I was trying to, you know. Was, you want to win. Show me win. I'll smash later. Dude, that, that tournament you had in Fargo, I gotta say, because we used to always, you know, watch the film, usually if Matt's match is not mine, but, <laughs> but uh, that tournament you had out in Fargo, I remember watching the videos, and it was one of the most impressive tournaments I think you ever had. Yeah, you, I you, it came up short, though. Dude, the kid who won it, you were beating. Yeah, could have shit of water. Yeah, you're right there, though. Goes. You're always right there. It was, it was funny. Just, but you know, I gotta pass on that wisdom now. Yep. You know, what good is that wisdom if you're not gonna pass it on to anybody? Yeah, Dave. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> fucking, you fucking wisdom hogging piece of shit. Let me know that salt and pepper. I know there's wisdom in there. No, no yeah, no, don't get fooled. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. He uses that to pick up girls. That's it. This I don't even gentleman. use it well enough. I should probably be better at it. Those baby blue eyes and the salt and pepper. Dude, keep fucking flirting with me right now. You're gonna get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Don't back me into a corner because I'll fuck my way out. Oh, he ain't crowd him. He's not gonna finish. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gonna be a long night. I'll be on crowd him, alright. <laughs> alright, let's wrap this fucking thing up. Let's wrap this thing up. We are going down some fucking bad rabbit holes right now. Right? <laughs> yeah. Alright, anyway. This is so good. We talked some wrestling. Uh, we got weird. And uh, I had some fun with my brother. So, oh, yeah. Who's your time? Matt, you got anything to plug? Uh, your ass. How many times have I ever used that joke? Twice. I feel like uh, that was yeah. probably yeah, the first I time on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. It just, I mean, it happened to be, you know, with what we just made the joke about. So. Uh, Razor Wrestling, Renovel yeah. Wrestling, yeah. Kona. Hey, the whole Long Island mm -hmm. wrestling scene. You know, everyone's, uh, like you guys said, we're doing the thing. Happy to see New York's on the map. National recognition. Calling out names on Flow Wrestling. It's all good. Let's keep it up. That's it. Alright, guys. Wrapping it up. No, hey. No. <laughs> oh, you are cute as a button. Don't. That's your thing. You keep that. I mean, I can be cute, but just not as a button. Be something else. You, you own the distinction of being cute as a button. No one can ever take that from you. Your little teapot. <laughs> 